Hello everybody, my name is Blitz, and I want to thank you for clicking on this video and joining me here as I discuss my reaction and feelings on the newly announced, well, actually newly revealed, Battlefield 1. Now right from the get-go, I'm gonna be pretty honest here. I'm actually quite disappointed that it is based in World War 1, or maybe just post World War 1, maybe it's an alternate history, we don't know it just yet. But it's obviously grounded in the World War One era. And, like I said, I'm actually quite disappointed. I've been wanting a Battlefield 2142 sequel for so damn long. And it just feels like we're never gonna get that. And it almost seems as if DICE is waiting for Activision to not make another futuristic Call of Duty before they do that. I, I, I know that's very unlikely, but I'm just... I want my Battlefield 2142 sequel so bad. <sighs> okay, but now that I got that all out of the way, let's discuss Battlefield 1. So pretty much, yeah, Battlefield 1 takes place in the World War 1 era. There's gonna be, obviously, bolt-action weapons, there's gonna be early automatic, uh, like, submachine guns, and of course we're gonna have squad automatic weapons like the BAR, and probably the Sheshak, or however you call it, that, that was like one of the worst weapons ever, ever produced. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we're gonna have a very large breadth of weapons. It's gonna be almost like a World War II game, I bet. However, especially in the multiplayer, you can tell that it might be... Uh, people might avoid the bolt-action weapons, or there might be a lot of bonuses attributed to them. Though I would like to see a realistic attribution of damage according to the actual round type, as opposed to just sort of randomized damage, even if the rounds are the same like you see in Battlefield 4. kind of drives me crazy. So something like a, a Mauser round, or a, uh, I don't know what the Brits had, I don't think theirs was a 308, I can't remember. I expect guns using those same rounds to all deliver sort of similar damage, of course the length of the barrel is going to matter, you know, you got carbine versions versus full size rifles, and then you got the machine guns which may not have as large a barrel, but they're outputting a lot of lead at once. I hope the game gets, it gets balanced in that aspect. But one thing that is pretty exciting about the World War One setting is, for those who know about World War One, it was fucking brutal. I mean, yeah, you had trench warfare going on, just lots of stalemates. Soldiers would rush out of those trenches, try to gain some ground, and just get mowed by frickin' machine gun fire. Or snipers, or both. But the possibility of really interesting melee combat does get me sort of excited. Also what gets me excited is the prospect of mounted infantry and cavalry tactics, even though as archaic as they were in World War I, there were a few cases where they did make sense. Because I'll, I'll tell you what, a horse can run a lot faster than a man laden with weapons and gear and whatnot. But a horse is a really big target. So ex there, I think we're really not only going to see the brutality of just man versus man, trench warfare, melee, and automatic and bolt-action weapons and machine gun fire, but you're, we're also going to see mounted combat on cavalry, but that also means we're also going to see a lot of horses die. And that should be interesting. I actually think animals, they are a huge part of warfare, especially in the late, well, I mean, before the industrialization of the world and even into the industrialization of the world from Civil War to the... Uh, not the Caspian War, I'm trying to think of the real name for that, whatever. And then even in World War One, and World War II, and there are still some situations that warrant the use of cavalry to this day. But yeah, I, I, I'm actually kind of, I don't want to say excited, I, I don't want to sound like a sadist here, but I am kind of interested to see how cavalry can work in a video game where a big part of the gameplay is, is firearms. And multiplayer, not something like Mountain Blade, where most of what most of what people are using are are mostly handheld weapons like swords and spears, but even some thrown weapons like javelins, and then of course you got basic missile weapons like uh, bows and crossbows. Although one thing that really kind of got me during that trailer that they played was you got to see a bit of mustard gas being dropped onto a play area. Obviously, it was probably single player, but gas warfare, chemical warfare could make things really interesting in a multiplayer game, especially if we have commanders again who have real control over artillery. It, can, it gives you the ability to control where people can go 
Uh, of course, this can also what's also is going to matter is how quickly the gas dissipates, how much damage it produces. But we all you'll probably have to use a gas mask, of course. And uh, if there are dogs in the game, they're going to need gas masks, just like they did in World War One. And of course, the horses will need gas masks, like they did in World War One, to prevent injury from gas attacks. And along with that, we saw the flamethrower being used by what was probably a German soldier, because I don't think any of the allies had flamethrowers in World War I. I know the Germans did, if I remember right. Flammenwerfer, or however it is called. As weird as it is to call them that, we're going to have vehicles in the form of horses, but we're probably going to have motorcycles and, of course, early, early armored vehicles like tanks, and probably light tanks as well, as well as just armored cars that were so prevalent in the World War I era. And of course we're going to have biplane combat, whoop de doo although there were a few monoplanes in that era, there weren't. There were a few and far between, but it should be interesting uh, to fight other people in biplanes, because biplanes are really slow aircraft. Of course, Battlefield has always kind of changed the way aircraft really fly in order to make it more compatible with compel creating a compelling game. Uh, but hopefully it's, it's decently authentic, I, I really hope it is. Especially if you get to, to use the turret in a, in a two-seat biplane as you got the pilot trying to, to dodge fire from an attacking aircraft and you're trying to get that attacking guy who's on your tail with the, with the turret. That should be a lot of fun. Kind of like what they showed in the trailer there just for like one second. And I just thought of this right now, but hopefully the Zeppelins and Dirigibles become an actual big part of the gameplay. I was just thinking how awesome it would be if you could board one of those things and actually take it down Titan style from 2142. That would be freaking awesome. However, they didn't have to do that in the First, first World War. They actually would just shoot the damn thing down. You riddle it with enough holes, hit the engines, catch it on fire, it's gonna go down. But I can totally see there being a air combat only mode. Uh, that is a mode that you do see. I know it was in Battlefield 3. I don't know if Battlefield 4 has that. I would, I would think it does. I know Battlefield 3, you could have just aircraft only all fighting against each other. And it was okay. It really wasn't my cup of tea. I mean, it's not realistic air combat, so it's not as fun as it could be. It's not like War Thunder. So there are certainly a lot of different and interesting gameplay possibilities with all the sort of antiquated weaponry as well as new industrial innovations that happened around that time of the World War I era and before that, even within the for, even within those 50 years leading up to the First World War, there were just so many innovations that happened from machine guns, you know, automatic weapons, to explosives and artillery, etc, etc. So, I mean, it should make for a pretty awesome, pretty interesting multiplayer experience. I really don't care about the single player that much, it, it'll be good for a run through, but just the multiplayer could be pretty damn, in pretty damn intense. I really just can't emphasize that enough. And I I honestly expect them, uh, DICE, to give us a lot of customization, not only over weapons, but probably over the gear that we carry, like uh, like armor. What was interesting about World War One is there was, there was, oh, not a movement, I, I want to say movement, but there were soldiers whose task was to be fitted with this very thick metal plated armor that made them look like medieval knights. And it was thick enough to stand up to small arms fire so they could possibly get across the uh, no man's land and attack the other trench. And it would be really cool if we get to see that as a choosable option for our character in the multiplayer combat. Of course, I expect something like that to highly affect our stamina and how fast we can move and what all we can carry. But in the right situation, if you get down into an enemy's trench and you got a submachine gun, you can just mow those motherfuckers down. And that'll definitely be one of those sort of water cooler moments that you could have in multiplayer if if you make it happen. And what's really ironic is in the past nine minutes of me talking about this, now I'm starting to get really excited over this game. Over now that I'm sort of over my Battlefield 2142 disappointment or sequel disappointment to that game. So I guess I'm getting sort of excited now. I, I might not purchase it day one. It might take a lot more convincing for me to go ahead and pick it up. I didn't pick up Battlefield 4 until almost, yeah, it was two years after it after it had released that I picked it up because it just looked too similar to Battlefield 3 and just really just didn't really feel like it was worth 60 bucks initially plus, plus another 50, 60 dollars just for all the, the expansion content. But hopefully, and I really feel that Battlefield 1 is gonna be so, it's gonna be so divergent 
from the typical battlefield experience that we've had since you know the past 10 years or so, especially since Battlefield 2. Uh, I expect it to be really cool, really interesting, and I'm excited for it now that I've talked about it and actually laid it all out for myself and possibly for you guys. And while I could probably go on and on about, you know, what could happen in this game, what's going to happen, what it's all about, how things are all going to work, I, I'm just going to go ahead and end it here. We don't have, we don't have enough con confirmed information to really say what all's going to go on in that game. We just need to pay attention to the next few months, especially with the EA Live or EA Play, whatever the hell their, their E3 replacement thing is going to be called. We'll just need to pay attention to that and see what they announce and they tell us. So yeah. So thanks for joining me. Uh, my name is Blitz. I hope you have a good one. I hope you're as excited for Battlefield 1 as I now am after talking about it. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.